Yo guys, Punk on another video. You know, a lot of you guys who have been following my channel for a while know that I was working on class specific leveling guides before launch. Unfortunately, I didn't really have enough time to complete every single class before August 26th. There just wasn't really enough time. But even with that being the case, I still want to complete the leveling guide catalog nonetheless. So we've done about half of the classes so far, so for this one we're going to be covering the mage, the god tier leveling class of the game of course, and this was proven to us by the classic legend himself, Joker DTV, the mythical bald no mage. So with this video I'm actually going to be using footage from Joker D's stream from 1 to 60 and also from this YouTuber named Stretta who has a nice compilation of his grind from 1 to 60 on private servers. I want to thank those two guys for letting me use their footage and of course go check out their channels they got great content on Twitch and YouTube respectively. Also keep in mind that this leveling guide specifically is going to be focusing on AoE leveling which is the most effective method of course. Let's focus on one aspect here rather than making the video too long or inconsistent. Alright, so here's my mage leveling guide, friends. Let's get into it. So here's the spec that I personally like to run. Keep in mind that this is my own personal spec. Once again, it might not be the same as what Joker D runs, and it might change depending on your preference. Regardless though, let's go over the important talents when it comes to AoE grinding, and later explain how to get the most out of them. So in the Frost Tree, we've got Elemental Precision, which is an improved chance to hit with your Frost Spells. This is obviously super important when it comes to AoE grinding, due to the fact that one resist on a Frost Nova or Kona Cold or pretty much whatever it is, can cause some issues sometimes when grouping up different enemies. We've got Improved Frost Nova, which of course is super important. Nova is arguably the most important ability when it comes to grouping up mobs in general. We've got Permafrost for an increased effectiveness of your slows. Improved Blizzard, which is of course the core, which allows you to AoE grind by adding a slow onto your Blizzard ticks. We've got Cold Snap for resetting Frost Nova's Ice Block, Ice Barrier, Cone of Cold. There's Ice Block and Ice Barrier for increased survivability, of course. And there's a couple other techniques tied in with Ice Block as well that we'll go over in a bit. And this one I find super useful, but some mages, surprisingly I've seen skip it, is Improved Cone of Cold, which increases the damage of your Cone of Cold, and this tied in with Shatter for an almost guaranteed crit when the targets are nova and the increased crit damage multiplier from Ice Shards is a really nice combo. It makes your Cone of Cold super effective in terms of damage. And in the Arcane Tree, I go for clear casting for mana free blizzards and the talent that improves your armor based on your intellect, which honestly is something that I've gone for in the past, but it might not be worth it. Maybe there's a better way to spend this talent point, although I think it's decent value considering it's only one talent point. So there's the core for AoE grinding. Now keep in mind that I've also skipped Frostbite. You don't actually want this talent. It can screw up your mass mob control by splitting them up if one gets Nova at the back and the rest are just running through. It's still doable to AoE grind with it, but it hurts more than it helps I find, so I'd skip this for clean pulls. So let's go over exactly how you want to use these abilities to the fullest extent. The first step is of course gathering mobs. There's two main techniques that you want to use when grouping up mobs. You got body pulls and ping pulls. Body pulls are exactly what you'd expect, running by a mob to aggro them through their aggro radius, mounted or just by running. A little trick that you can use to help with body pulling is actually blink. So you can pull one pack with your body and then blink to an opposing pack and group them up all together by moving to a neutral middle spot between both packs and ping pulling is using your ranged attacks to gather extra further away mobs as you're body pulling the base pack. So using your wand works for this, counterspelling is a common technique like just counterspelling a mob at the corner to bring it to you, using rank 1 fireball and make sure to use fireball specifically. Frostbolt will slow the enemy which will slow its ability to reach the mob cluster effectively. Also a little addition you might actually want to keep swiftness potions in your bags when body pulling. Popping a sprint pot can greatly help gathering mobs in certain areas where the mobs are more spread out or I guess not as dense. The next portion is spatial awareness, finding a nice middle ground where you can line them all up and using your pathing to get them all chasing from the same funnel point. And another technique that's used if you're pulling a pack that's quite big is actually just ice blocking. This is mainly utilized when you have a ton of mobs that you're pulling at once or you're waiting for stragglers that you've ping pulled from afar. You'll just sit in the ice block and wait until everything is coalesced together. So once you've got them all where you want them, it's time to Frost Nova, and here's where Elemental Precision and Cold Snap come into effect. There's a chance that a Frost Nova gets resisted, so an increased chance to hit is obviously great, and Cold Snap allows you to get a second lease on life, resetting the cooldown on Frost Nova for a second application. So once they're all nova it's time to break distance and drop that blizzard on top of their skulls. When it comes to the first application of blizzard, make sure to get all of the mobs within it. Many mages will opt for pushing that blizzard radius ring as forward as possible, but that can lead to a situation where some of the back mobs don't actually get the blizzard slow applied, and again causing fragmentation. So you want to actually apply the blizzard ring a tiny bit centered, but kind of forward to yourself. 
and it works perfectly fine this way. They won't break out before the channeling is done. Now after that first application, it's time to cast another one of course, and the second blizzard you can start getting a bit more greedy and pushing it significantly forward ahead, even ahead of them entirely and they'll sort of all run into it as they uh, walk through. So I suggest don't be too greedy with the first one, make sure that it encompasses all of the mobs in the Nova, and then with the second one you can start pushing it forward. And here's a little trick that you can use to maximize the distance before applying that second blizzard. So all of those mobs are still going to be slow after the blizzard ends, and you can utilize the remainder of that blizzard slow to sort of push the distance a little bit more, jumping and getting a little bit of an extra buffer between you and them, and then sending off that second blizzard. Also keep in mind that permafrost increases the slow duration on your blizzard to above 1.5 seconds depending on how many talents you have into it. Another little trick that you can use in relation to blizzard slow is actually using rank 1 blizzard on massive pulls with multi-leveled environments so you can gather all of the mobs on the top level, jump off, and then as they start to funnel down one of the ramps, they're most likely going to be significantly separate as they're running down. So you'll want to actually rank 1 blizzard to apply the slow to the mobs ahead and that'll allow the back stragglers to catch up and eventually Eventually you'll cluster them all together. Now in the scenario where those mobs are actually closing in on you, because it's indeed going to happen depending on their movement speed or depending on how far you were able to get or whatever circumstance it is, it's time to alter the strategy a little bit. A lot of the time, Frost Nova will still be on cooldown, so the tactic utilized is your Cone of Cold slow. The main idea when kiting on a mage is actually a balancing act between Cone of Cold and Frost Nova. Frost Nova has a cooldown above 20 seconds with an 8 second duration, and Cone of Cold has a 10 second cooldown with an 8 second duration slow which is of course an 11 second slow when you have permafrost. So that allows you to basically perma slow enemies with Cone of Cold, allowing you to stall out till the next Frost Nova is available. It doesn't end there however. There's another technique to use alongside this, and that's where Arcane Concentration and Clearcasting comes into effect. So during that Cone of Cold slow, you can actually hover in a bit of a safe zone outside of the auto attack radius of your enemies and endlessly spam Arcane Explosion while running in circles. There's a couple of reasons to do this, and one is obviously that you might as well do damage while stalling for the next Frost Nova. Another could be to just finish off the low HP mobs if they're about to die. But the third is actually the most intriguing one. So your Arcane Explosion can actually proc a clear casting proc. Clear casting, of course, makes your next spell cost zero mana. This means you can, in a sense, fish for clear casting procs. Then expend the no mana cost spell cast on a big mana dumping ability like Blizzard, let's say, if you can break distance enough, or Cone of Cold, if that's what you want to do. You'll see mages sometimes spam rank 1 Arcane Explosion in this scenario to do exactly that, fish for a clear casting state. So always keep rank 1 Arcane Explosion, especially if you're low on mana. It's a very important trick to be aware of, and sometimes people will actually go for clear casting early before actually moving towards improved Blizzard with their talent selection. So they'll only put one point into clear casting in the Arcane Tree, and then further push into Frost after that, and maybe start AoE leveling in the higher level 20s, since they're only actually going to put one point into Arcane Concentration, so that's only a total of six points into Arcane at all. So keep that in mind if you want to run that way, although I tend to just rush for improved Blizzard personally. When it comes to survivability spells, of course keep Ice Barrier up as much as you can to absorb the odd hit. Use Ice Block when needed if it's up. You can also use Ice Block to wait for a second Frost Nova if for whatever reason you're forced into that predicament. And sometimes use Blink to just break distance quickly after you've already applied Blizzard and you're going for a second one during the slow duration. Another thing that you can do is actually this combo here, where rather than using Blizzard to slow and kite enemies the whole time, you can actually Flame Strike the Frost Nova and maybe Cone of Cold right off of it. It's almost like a AoE Shatter combo where you're going Flame Strike into Cone of Cold. This I'd suggest maybe for way higher levels and just Arcane Spam during the slow effect, but keep in mind that this one's actually very difficult and inconsistent to do when you don't have good gear. It's more viable on a geared level 60 mage when AoE farming for gold. I'd stick to just the basic blizzard strategy, but sometimes you can do this, especially if you're much higher level than the mobs that you're farming. However, it is an option, and maybe if you have a clear casting state, you might want to cast a big combo and just finish them off if they're 40% HP and you have them all Nova. It's you can use this sometimes flame strike into Kona Cold on top of the Nova. So those are basically the core techniques that allow you to execute the job. When it comes to gear, this is actually a really important aspect. If you neglect your gear while you're leveling up, you might actually hit parts where you struggle with doing this effectively. You might be too squishy with a small health pool, or you might run out of mana with a small mana pool due to the lack of intellect. The approach is actually really simple, just get green of the eagle gear. So buy items off of the auction house to set yourself up for success. 
basic greens with the eagle affix aren't super expensive, especially considering all the gold that you'll be making from mass farming mobs. Of the eagle is plus stamina and plus intellect. Some people would actually suggest to get that, I think it's called the Azer set or whatever, and it, it gives intellect and it gives spell power. I wouldn't go for spell power in the early levels because your blizzard actually has a very, very, very low spell power coefficient on it. Just go for intellect and go for stamina. So now that you have the techniques, the build, the gear, where exactly do you farm? What are the best spots to farm in your journey to max level? Well, let's give a thanks to Shredda for his awesome condensed compilation video of his journey from 1 to 60. And a little additional tip is actually whenever there's an associated quest with the mobs that you're actually farming, make sure to pick it up. If you're going to go out to mass farm mobs, you might as well have the specific quest associated with those mobs to enhance the experience gain slightly. So let's quickly go over the farm spot progression. There's the wetland knoll camps, the skelly camps in Raven Hill Cemetery and Duskwood, the worgen camps in Duskwood, especially the Night Vale Fangs and the Dark Runners, the Hammerfall Grunts and Peons, which are the Orcs at the Arathi Farms. The Meyerfin Murlocs in Northern Dustwallow Marsh. And honestly, most of the mobs in Dustwallow can actually be AoE grinded. So if this spot is taken, you can do the Crocs, the Raptors, whatever you can find, really. We've got the Lashtail Raptors in the Jungle Stalkers in Stranglethorn Vale. The Undead Ravagers in Desolus. The Death Strike Tarantulas in Swamp of Sorrows, which are the spider camps in the south of the zone. The Stone Vault Bone Snappers in the Badlands, the Giant Buzzard camps in the Badlands. The Dock Worker camps at the Pirate Docks in Tenaris. This is one of the most infamous spots there is. We've got the zombies in Western Plaguelands in general. There's the farms, and then there's obviously the spot at the south where Uther's Grave is at. And then Hearth Glen, which is the humanoid camps in the north of Western Plaguelands. Alright fellas, that's it for this one. I really tried to focus this video on mechanics. Most leveling guides just go over like a PowerPoint panels telling you all kinds of different stuff that really isn't super helpful to actually getting the job done. Hopefully this video helps you overcome some of the hurdles that have been stopping you from taking on the challenge of AoE speed leveling on a mage. And once again, I want to extend a thank you to Joker D and Shredda for letting me use your footage. Thank you guys for watching all the way through if you made it through the whole video. And if you like my style of content and want to see more like it in the future, make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe. Of course, hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I post a new video right out of the render oven. You know the drill soldiers. And with that being said, guys, hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.